Hello, welcome. And I'm going to show you how to set up text with fractions and how to even have the answer display as a fraction. So you can pause the video and look at my code right here. This is basically what I'm going to show you. I'm going to walk through it piece by piece and we'll start from scratch. So we'll call our module adding fractions. And in the prompt, we're just going to put some fractions to be added. Let's define our fractions though. How are we going to do that? Well, we we'll use variables. And we'll say a is the numerator of the first fraction, and we'll have it be a random number between 1 and 5. And then b will be the denominator. Now, I could be, be, have b be a separate random set of numbers, but we'll have it be equal to a plus some random amount. Let's say 1 through 3. And the idea is, one thing you want to start thinking about in these modules is not only what did the variables uh, each equal, but how are they related to each other? Because you might want to control that for a certain desired end, um, outcome. So in this case, my random variable c will be something, let's say, between 4 and 8. And the denominator d will be uh, equal to c, that numerator, plus some random number between 1 and 4. I'm just, and I, I have no design here. I'm just showing you that variables can be related to each other. I'll have e be equal to our answer. And in delta math, you could just say a over b plus c over d. It'll understand that. It'll work it out for you. And the answer will be the variable e. Now, for the prompt here, um, and this is, we're going to improve upon this in a moment, but for the prompt, we just want to set up um, some LaTeX, and I'm going to use the square bracket for display mode. That'll give me a bigger, nicer fraction. You can use the curve bracket, that's for inline, and that just means LaTeX in the line with the text. So I'm going to use a square bracket, and I'm going to set up a fraction. What is my fraction? Well, it's going to be A over B, right? To call the variable, we need quotations. A over B. And that's my first fraction. And then I want to add my second fraction. And notice that in, in delta math, I can enter a fraction with a comma between here. They allow us to do that. It's pretty cool. But I'm going to just use the LaTeX commands right here because I'm used to plus C. That's my numerator here. And then our, our denominator is D. OK. So here we want to close this out. I need to close it out to close the LaTeX here. And I'm going to add my quotation mark. I deleted that by accident. And this should be good. There's some issue here. See this little red X? Unexpected slash. So here, um, it could be that the prompt is, is starting with the LaTeX command with a slash and then a square, and then ending with a slash and a square. I think what it is right here, see this little quotation mark? That's what it is. So I had an extra quotation mark in there. Now if we run the program, you can see that we've got our fractions. It looks pretty good. It's working. Okay. And if I click it too fast, you'll see the LaTeX, right? <laughs> All right. Now for um, the answers, what we want to type in is add line. I'm going to show you this command right here shows lines of code that students would see if they were checking their solution. So for add line, I just, I just want to show what um, how del I want to see how delta math is interpreting the answer right here. And to do that, I'm just going to type in um, E. And let's see what happens. Oops, oh, excuse me, the number E right there. So I should add the variable, right? So plus, plus, quotation mark, quotation mark. Oops, give me a second there. Too many there. Let's see what happens now. So you can see the issue is that it's giving me decimals, right? I don't want that. I don't want decimals. I want the addition to be in, in fraction form. So how do I do that? Well, in delta math, if I type number here to define this addition, and then I want the answer to be in terms of a fraction, I just type in e dot frac, right? And let's see what happens here. And now it understands, right? It understands that the answer should be as a fraction. Now. Let's go to a nice one here so you can find a nice one. Uh, okay, four thirds. So that's one and a third, which is an interesting one because it's a repeating. So if I type in 1.3 all the way, what happens? It doesn't understand it. So for repeating uh, decimals, it'll need a fraction form, but you'll find for other ones here, all right, if you look at these solutions, 65 over 42. So if we type in 65 slash 42, students can enter fractions directly. Right, it understands the answer. And if we go back to show question, we could test that out. 
So 65 over 42 is, is not a friendly decimal. Um, but I, I should pick a better one. But the idea is actually for many of these, unless you specify, and you can look at delta math and how to see how to do that, you can actually enter them as decimal answers as well. Um, if you want to control it and, and make it so it's a fraction answer, there are different ways of doing that. But what I wanted you to see in this video is how to type out a problem with fractions and make sure the solution is displaying as a fraction. And the key really is to enter that number command. And then here, when you're displaying something, the variable e, you're displaying it as a fraction. Right, so this number command gives you the ability to display any result as a fraction or any variable as a fraction by typing the variable dot frac. And notice answer here I just have as e. I can type e dot frac. It'll understand that, right? It won't change anything. But Delta Math is saying e in any form will be accepted. It's just that repeating decimals or decimals that go on forever are problematic here. If you, have, if you want answers to be as repeating decimals and not fractions, you can type in the round command and have them round to a certain degree. All right, thanks.